We're going to look at something slightly different now. So the formula on the previous page relate to two random variables. In this case, two different random variables. There we were looking at rooms and dinners. And each was multiplied by the constant $80 and $20. But sometimes we don't want to multiply by a constant. Instead, we want to use a random variable multiple times. So we're going to think of the formula without the a's and b's and replace the y by the x because it's the same thing over and over. Now this is not given to you. It's something that you'll want to think about. But again, e of x plus x, this is the same thing over and over. And that could go on. It could be, you know, four or five, ten of them. It could be a hundred of them all written out next to each other. And that tells us, in this case, the variance of x plus x is equal to the variance of x plus the variance of x. And again, that could be plus the variance of x plus the variance of x plus the variance of x plus the variance of x, depending on how many times we do it, how many multiples we do the same thing over and over and over again. So in a sense, we're counting things up and we're not changing the units. you can almost think about it as counting up instead. So as an example, continuing with the previous question, the Motelier wants to calculate the mean and standard deviation of the number of rooms occupied in 30 nights. Remember that mean was 3.55 and the standard deviation was 1.43 for one night. So, let's let the distribution um, we'll call it TR for the total number of rooms occupied in 30 nights. So, here we're going to see things look a little bit different. If you want to think about this again, that E of X for one night, that had a range, in a sense, for his nightly budget, where he had anywhere between zero to six rooms occupied. Right? So for one night it's just between zero and six. Now what we're looking at here is more like a monthly thing. So thirty nights. And over the course of thirty nights he could have somewhere between zero and 180 rooms occupied. So there's a much bigger difference between these here. So he's trying to estimate, given that he'll have a variety of rooms occupied every night. You know, it could be something like three the first night, and four, a couple of nights of sixes, then maybe a one, two, five. He's trying to estimate over 30 nights what's that going to add up to in total. But that's going to be revolving around the fact that each night you have an average or an expected value of 3.55. So, when I talk about the mean or the expected value for the total number of rooms, that's going to be the expected value for the room on night one, number of rooms on night one, plus the expected value of the rooms on night two, plus the expected value of rooms on night three, plus the expected value of rooms on oops, rooms night four, plus etc. all the way up to the rooms on night thirty. So that's going to carry on as he goes along. So how does this average out over 30 nights? Well, in the way that we've written this out, this is the same thing every single night, because every single night it's going to be 3.55 plus 3.55 plus 3.55 plus 3.55, etc. 
up to the last one of 3.55. And if you remember anything about your algebra, that's 30 of the same thing added up. So that just becomes 30 times 3.55, which gives us 106.5 rooms over 30 nights on average. Some nights I'll have more, some nights I'll have less, but on average that's what it will happen. So where things get different for us, because up until this point everything's been the same as before, that formula doesn't really change, it's still just the 30 times the number of rooms, or the expected value for one room. But where things are different than before is now that we're talking about variance. So it's the variance of the rooms on night one plus the variance of the rooms on night two plus the variance of the rooms on night three and on it goes to the variance of rooms on night four oops on night thirty all the way to the end so here we're just looking at doing the variance again and again and again and this simplifies out differently than the formula from the previous page. This becomes 30 times the variance of one night, or in a sense 30 times 1.43 squared. Remember, variance of x is equal to the standard deviation squared. So 30 times all of that becomes one point, sorry, 61.347. And to get to my standard deviation of the total rooms, I need to make sure I do my square root. So my standard deviation over 30 nights is 7.83 rooms. My average number of rooms would be 106.5 rooms over the 30 nights. Now this is different than the formula that's used above because here we do not square A. And again this is when we're not changing units so it's the same thing over and over again. And part of that is because the variation, if you want to think about it, from night to night will kind of balance itself out so the extremes kind of get cut off. You know, some nights you won't have very many people and some nights you'll have a lot of people and overall over 30 nights that variation becomes kind of smooth, smooths itself out a bit. Versus on one night where you just have the variation of that one night. It could be one, it could be six and there's no way for that to average out over time. So that is the difference on these ones. When you're not changing the units, when you're doing the same thing over and over again, counting it up 30 nights in a row or something, you don't square the variance, but everything else stays the same. And again, that's kind of noted down here for you guys. Um, so the variance formula here is 30, not squared. And again, this is because we're combining, it should be 30 different nights. Like I said, some will be busy, some will be quiet, but the extremes will average out and the result it will result in a much smaller standard deviation than for the, the previous situation. So what happens here is you just want to make sure that you're keeping track of when you're using the squared term and when you're not with a variance. So here we're not changing units. We started with rooms, we're ending with rooms, we're counting things up. You keep it the same. And one little assumption that you want to think about here is we can only apply this if the motel nights are independent. And this is not necessarily true in this case, so here I'd have to assume something. But just keep in mind, any assumptions that you make you want to put down for an example that you go through or for a problem on the test. So some families or groups might book multiple nights in a row. And also, at a hotel you'd expect maybe the weekends to be busier than the weekdays, but it depends. Maybe if it's in a business district the weekdays are busier than the weekends. So there are a few assumptions here that we're having to make when we're going through this particular example. So just one last time. 
When we're doing the same thing over and over again, or when we're not changing units, rooms and rooms and rooms and lots of rooms, you add things up and the variances are not squared. So this becomes a of x, where a is number of times, and this becomes a variance of x, where again a is number of times. And this only works when you're not changing the units. Again, it's the same thing over and over again. Unlike in the previous example, where we are changing from, for instance, dinners and rooms to dollars, and there are different variables here. And in that case, your variance will be squared when you use the formula. So it takes a bit of practice to get used to that, but um, it will start to make sense to you as you go along and do some more of the problems.